Today I'm going to be drafting a team on NHL 24, but the next player must have a lower salary than the previous. We will assemble the squad in franchise mode and then attempt to win the ultimate prize. The Stanley Cup. Let's find out which team we are going to be drafting for. It is the... Central All-Stars. Alright, well no. Let's run that back and try it again. We are going to be drafting for the Arizona Coyotes. No owner telling me what to do. No jabroni editing the lines behind my back. Also, no fog of war or player morale or CPU trades, but I will do this. I almost forgot that again, actually. I have a feeling we're going to have an earlier pick. I'm saying top 10, but if I had to pick a specific number, I'm going to go with 5. 11. I was close with the top 10, though. So ideally, right, we want to take... The highest salary we can, because that keeps our options open. And it looks like Artemi is going to be the guy. 95 overall, let's go, bread man. I'm quite confident that we can take anybody on the board at this point, because 11.6, we have to go lower. Don't think there's anyone close to that left. I mean, sure, we have EK at 10, but still, it's not really close, per se. We're not talking about, like, 11.3 or something here. Actually, you know what? I was torn between choosing Carlson or Stone, but I think Carlson might actually... We can't do that, because the salary must... Well, there goes that plan. I was gonna say our next pick is fairly close, so if we take Stone, EK65 might still be available, but that is... Obviously not gonna work for reasons that I just stated. And I don't think the alternative will work. If we take Carlson, Stone is definitely gonna be gone. So you know what? I'm going with Stone. Yup, sure enough, there he is, right in front of our face, and we cannot take him. Oh, there's actually Doughty down here at 11 million, but yeah, you know what? The thing is, I still want to stay within the cap, so I'm gonna try my best. So we just took a 9.5, let's go down to 8.8. .8. That is a pretty big drop-off, but it is a stud defenseman that we are gonna need. We could go to Hurdle, it's a 700k drop off. We'd be getting our first line center to play with the bread man, as well as Mark Stone. I think that's a good route. Yeah, sure, let's go for it. We only have one defenseman at the moment and Spurgeon's only a 200k drop off. So I will be drafting him, but I feel like we're gonna have to start going more exponential here because we are running out of cap space already. Either Couturier or Giroux are gonna have to play on the wing. And Giroux is center slash right wing, so we're not going to have a problem there. Boom. Going to go with Taylor Hall at 6 million to be our second line left winger. Oh no, call me crazy, but I'm looking at our cap space and we do not have a lot of room to work with. So I'm going to take Flurry at 3.5, which is a pretty substantial drop. And then I could take Jake Wallman, who is a defensive defenseman at 3.4. Warren Fogle at 2.75. We are really cutting it close. This could be a panic move, but I'm taking DeSmith at 1.8. We only have 6 million left. I think I got us in a situation here, but we're going with Yanni, 1.5. I actually don't think it's possible because we still have to take seven players and we are under 5 million left. I'm not that worried about it because, you know, you can go over the cap in this and it will just adjust it, which obviously I didn't want to go extremely over and be that guy. Besides, teams in the NHL love going over the cap. It's like the new thing to do. Will I am Carrier, a left winger making 1.4 is going to be joining our squad. Here's a cheeky little way to sneak in some picks. We could get Nizov at 125 and then Parabix at 112. Yes, please. All right, Nikolai, you're up first. You're kidding me. You have to be joking. Who did this? Who drafted him? All right, so we are now rivals with the New Jersey Devils because they came in and spoiled my plan, which is unacceptable. I will settle for Troy Stetcher at 1.1. I really am sick and tired of the players that I plan to take in the next round always being gone. Emil Bemstrom. A depth sniper hopefully will give us some depth goal scoring. Sure, why not? He won like three cups in a row and... He's about to win another one. Let's get Corey Perry to just go out there and be a maniac. Seems like a good strategy to me. And our final pick will be Sheldon Dries. Another depth sniper here, undrafted. 78 overall though. This is what our team looks like. We only ended up being about two mil over the cap, which really isn't that bad. See, normally I'm the opposite way. I'll start dropping off too much too fast and then we will get nowhere near the cap, but not this time. Decided to go a little bit more risky. Well, let's go assemble the team, shall we? We should have some good chemistry on the first line. The depth, not too sure about it, but we are going to learn today. No, plus five like I thought on the first line, and then after that it is all zeros. So, why is Kachurier 
down here. Oh, they want Giroud to be the first line center. I'm going to run with this because this is sort of what it was intended to be. And the chemistry is actually a little bit better this way. We get plus five and then plus two. Sure, it's not a full plus five, but still says it. I paid zero attention to the handedness of our defensemen. So I'm kind of just living on a prayer here. And you know what? Okay. Two righties, but they're still a plus one. So I've got a crazy one for you. I'm having two righties on the first pair because it's plus five. So why would I not do that? And then one and one. That's unbelievable. Tending the goal, we have the goat himself. Flower backed up by DeSmith. I think we have a lot of potential here. It might be one of those asterisk teams though. You know, put the little star beside it if we end up going on to win the cup or something because, oh, they're 2 million over the cap. I'm going to go with Panarin having the most points at 96. I think he's going to go off. And I'll say that we qualify for the playoffs with 47 wins. Let's get after it. Started out 4-0 and and then lost three in a row now. Make that four in a row, five. Absolutely disgusting behavior. We're still doing pretty good. Second in the division. Oh no, do we suck? I really thought this team was going to be good. But maybe I was mistaken. I will enter the deadline, but things are looking bleak for the Arizona Coyotes. I don't know. We might not be in the playoffs after all. Bobrovsky's available, making 10 million. No. Hannafin now a Golden Knight, but in this he is a part of the Minnesota Wild. Get me out of here now. Fine, you know what? I'm gonna let Jabron cook just this once. Head coach preferred lines will run with whatever you think we should, and we'll see if we do any better, because right now, the boys are struggling. All right, big win against Chicago, let's go! Shut out against Detroit. We shouldn't be getting shut out, especially not twice in a row? Wow, I can't lie. I drafted a stinker. I don't know why I thought the team would be good. I mean, on paper, they look like they could be. Wow, Toronto's up 3-0 in the Stanley Cup final against the Colorado Avalanche, but I stopped here so that we could go look at their lines. I present to you your President's Trophy winners. They had Marshy playing with McDusty and Boldy. That is a filthy first line. Turbo playing with Duchesne and Hoaglander. Very good second line, and their depth is solid. Nothing too crazy here on defense. Some very good players, but yeah, just solid again. Now the team currently getting dusted in the Stanley Cup Finals. The Colorado Avalanche, they have Jake Gensel, Malkin, and Matty Beneers on the first line. Nice. They really stacked up with right-handed defensemen. They have Fox, Anderson, and then Adam Larson on the third pair. That is wild. Oh, and they have Bobrovsky. Did they pick him up at the trade deadline? No, I guess they just drafted him and put him on the block, but nobody bit. Now, this is an interesting one. This is the team that is likely about to win the Stanley Cup. Their second line is Anders Lee, Anthony Sorelli, and Tim Winston. Unbelievable. This guy must be toe drag releasing like his life depends on it. Ooh, I really like their top four here. And in net, they have you see what I see, Sorrow. So let's go back, see if they can close it out, or if they get reverse swept. It's still on the board. Advance one day at a time here, and there was no game that day. Not a sweep. Keep going. Ah, oh, they got it done. Taking five games, the Toronto Maple Leafs are your Stanley Cup champions, and the Utica Comets... Grabbing the Calder. So as I said, Calgary won the President's Trophy with 110. The Kraken right there with 106. It was just straight up the top 16 teams that made it into the playoffs. Things you love to see. I can't believe Panarin only had 78 points. That is... No! Mark Stone had 85. He had his guy. Plus 24. What were you doing, Breadman? Giroux ended up with 59 and he was a dash 13. Hurdle 57, plus 9. Why did DeSmith do so well? He had a 916, 276. I guess a fairly small sample size, but still. Flower struggled. Spurgeon and Petrangelo did okay, but yeah, still nothing really amazing going on back here. Bobrovsky led the league with 41 wins. He had a 905 save percentage and a 312 GAA. Oh, you would. Way to just rub it in my face. Eric Carlson leads defenseman with 96 points. Adam Fox is up there with 94, but then a huge drop off to 76. And what a season for this guy. Nikita Kucherov, 118 points and 55 goals. Art Ross, Rocket Richard, probably going to get the heart. He is going to clean up. An absolute janitor at the awards ceremony. Jack Hughes had 110, Nylander 104, and Reinhardt 102. The Canucks ended up taking Petey back. Can't say I blame them. Go through the team awards real quick here, but what we really came for is the individual trophies, the Art Heart combo intact with Nikita Kucherov. Yep, 
Of course. Oh, come on. Seriously? The Calder obviously goes to Betsy. I mean, he was first line on the team that just went on to win the Stanley Cup, so... Vince done with the con Smythe. I did not see that coming. Now I want to go look at the playoff stats real quick. Vasilevsky with a Vesna season, and the Jennings goes to Swayman. Martinez scoops up the Bill Masterton. Trojanovic gets the Jack Adams. Selkie to Barkov. Cooch with the Lindsay and the Rocket Richard. Yeah cleaning up as i said so gujar actually had the most points with 28 and then huberto had 27 so they gave it to vince dunn that is very surprising should have gave it to this guy nearly a 930 save percentage and an unbelievable playoff record Goalie got snubbed again. All right, the playoff tree. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you have draft ideas, go ahead and let me know. If you leave a like, your favorite team is going to win the Stanley Cup next year. So there's that going for you. I appreciate you as always. I'll see you soon.